hungry for more of you. Uh, seeking after God that without him I can't do nothing. Seeking after him that he's my substance. He's the air that I breathe. So I'm not seeking God just because I want something. That is not seeking God. Seeking God is where you die to self. And all that you want is Him because you surrender to Him. And you want Him to do what He needs to do in your life. Family of God, we need to understand. Don't try to fill a spiritual desire with natural stuff. If you have a spiritual desire to be hungry and thirsting after God, more of His presence in your life, more of His power in your life, Family of God, you cannot use natural stuff. You can't. You cannot. You cannot. You're only fooling yourself. It takes one to be in the spirit. Walking in the spirit. Yielding to the Holy Spirit. Surrendering to the Holy Spirit. To allow Him to come in and do what He needs to do in your life. And many people have so much avoiding their life and emptiness and they're using the natural things trying to satisfy and think it's going to uh, quench that, 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 that thirst or that hunger of, of spiritual, but yet it's not. And we see that in the story of John chapter 4. Let's turn there, John chapter 4. Praise God. John chapter 4. Thank you, Father, for your word. That I sit down so you stand up. And you speak through me. Yes, Lord. As your humble servant. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Verse. From verse 6. And I'm, I'm reading from the Passions translation. It says. When by his long journey he sat on the edge of Jacob's well. He sent his disciples into the village to buy food, for it was already afternoon. Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink of water. Verse 9, surprised, she said, Why would a Jewish man ask a Samaritan woman for a drink of water? In that time, there was no relationship between the Jews and the Samaritan. And, 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 and in that time, how would a Jew... Jesus at that time asked a woman, a Samaritan, and not just a Samaritan, but asked a woman, a married woman, you know, uh, 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 a woman, okay? But Jesus replied, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God wants to give you, you'd ask me for a drink and I would give you living water. So Jesus says, if you only knew, if you only knew, I would give you this gift. Praise God. Mm. That gift that God wants to give you and you ask me for a drink and I would give you what? Living water. I'm not going to give you a cup of water. He said, I'm going to give you living water. Because Jesus was concerned about the condition of this woman. And many times people just focus on the outside of somebody. And they're not concerned about looking at the root cause of the problem. They are concerned about the outside of people and yet not desiring by the Spirit of God the condition that people are enduring internally, that they hide in pain, suffering, going through some trauma. And all we just want to do is the generic thing, is lay hands and pray or put oil and pray. And we want to see you fall down and we think by falling down there's deliverance. No! True deliverance only comes with the word of God. The scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you've got to constantly hear the word of God. You've got to constantly speak the word of God. You've got to constantly teach the word of God. You've got to constantly teach and preach kingdom, the message. 
we plow but silver seven. You don't even have a bucket, and this well is really deep. So where do you find this living water? Do you really think that you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it itself, along with his children and livestock? Listen to me. People are looking to too much religion and tradition of this world and thinking it's going to satisfy them. You're holding the cross of a chain to receive power, and you're not going to the power source, who is Jesus Christ. You're looking to the frame. You're looking to all the things of this world. And this is what this woman said. Are you greater than And we'll be 
be forever satisfied. Man, there is no man and no woman that can satisfy you. It is only Jesus that can satisfy you. The material things of this world cannot satisfy you. It is only Jesus that can satisfy you. He said, I want to give you this living water so that you may thirst no more. You may not thirst after the things of the flesh. You will not thirst of the things of the desires of this world. But you will be in a position of wanting more of him. Because the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And when you taste of God's goodness, you will pursue after that because you want it more. It's like if you taste something that's cooked so mm. nice, mm. you want more. Amen. You're going to taste. So you want more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want more, but you want more. Mm. Because it tastes good. Yeah. Because maybe you never had it before. <laughs> and so you taste it and you pursue after it. And that must be the hungering and the thirsting of the God. That as I taste of the goodness of God, mm. I, I'm going to leave this on the table. Yes. This table. Confusion, of doubt, of fear, of man's opinions, of negative opinions. And I'm going to pursue to sit at the table of the Lord. He said, I've prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I've anointed your head with oil. My God, my God, my God, my God. That your cup runs over man. I'm saying, tell your God that we are in the overflow season. Because the anointing of the Lord is upon your life. So that oil overflows. Amen. Because the oil flows from the head to the bottom. Mm. Never from the bottom to the top. Amen. That's why when Jesus stood in the, in the temple, he said, The Spirit mm. of the Lord is upon Amen. Why? Jesus was sent. Don't go out if you have not been sent. You're supposed to, when you go out in sin, you will be the carrier of the living water. Amen. The Bible says that it springs up in your belly as a river. That you will take that life giving water that you receive from Jesus inside of you through the Holy Spirit. You will take life, amen, and you will be, the apostle says, I've come as a drink offering to you. You've got to be a drink offering to the amen. people that are hurt and that are broken and that are messed up and they're in a position that are dead. You amen. come as the living water. My God. My Jesus. And you come and you be that drink offering just by the words that proceed out of your mouth, just by your presence. You're able to turn dead situations around. Oh, my Jesus. Mm. My Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. Sure. Oh, my Jesus. My, my Jesus. Walk with life, people. Mm. Right? They will never thirst again and will forever be satisfied. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit. My Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus, my Jesus. Springing up and flooding you with endless life. Endless life. Have you seen the people? I have no life anymore. I'm tired. Why? You are seeing things from the natural perspective. You have set up camp. You have set up camp in the midst of your valley. And your valleys are meant for you to go through. And not to take a pillow and lie down and feel sorry for yourself. You are an agent of change. I said in Johannesburg this week and I said, stop allowing people to walk over you, all over you. Stop that. Because you can't play their tune. You mm. can't play according to their tune. When they say move, you move. And now when you don't move, there's a problem. Mm. And now you're frustrated. Oh, a pastor, just to keep the peace, I'm going to move with the tune. Mm. Paul says, who has been? Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. Who has bewitched you? 
that you stopped looking the spirit and now you're operating in the flesh because you want to be a man pleaser mm. and not a God pleaser. Yes. Church of the living God, we ought to please God. The Bible says in everything that you do, do it as unto the glory of the Lord, not just coming to church, but everything, even in your job. Do it diligently unto God. Amen. Because you represent Jesus in everything that you do. Do it in love. Do it, in, do it with willingness and obedience. But if you're not happy, trust God to open another door. But don't show the elegance and attitude. Hmm. Because that is not a believer. Amen. We ought to represent Jesus Christ everywhere. 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 Not just coming to church on a Sunday morning or going to prayer meeting in the week. You want to look holy. Hmm. And you want to sound holy. But you not be a holy as he is holy. Holiness is not a denomination. Holiness is a standard. And holiness is God's standard. Amen. And if you say that you belong to God and you're a child of God, then you will stand up for that standard. And you will pursue that standard in your life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give it to you because it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit springing up and flooding you with endless life. Hmm. With endless life. It is air, the air that we breathe in our lungs. That's why we can praise Him. Hmm. He's the giver of life. And we want to appreciate life. And do what God has called you to do and not just live life in any way the, one, the way that you want to live life. It is time for you to make wise choices and wise decisions now. And stop blaming people for the results that you are getting because you made choices and decisions based on your own understanding and you did not consult God, neither have you consulted the word of God, neither have you consulted the counsel of God. And you're in a predicament where you are. You've got to go back to the drawing board and say, God, where have I went wrong? Holy Spirit revealed to me. And if I have to repent, yes, you have to repent. You can't just expect God to bless you. Come on. Show me. Lead me, Holy Spirit. Guide me. Search my heart. We don't want to pray like that. We just want God bless me. God come through for me. God break through and break through. When did you say God break through me? Mm. Break me down. Break my flesh down. For the true sacrifice that the Lord requires for you to be broken. It's spirit. And a contrite heart. Sure. Nothing else matters. You just want God. Mm. The woman replied, verse 15, let me drink that water so I'll never be thirsty again. And in order to come back here to draw the water, Jesus said, go get your husband and bring him back here. But I'm not married. Verse 17, the woman answered, that's true. Jesus says, well, you've been married five times and now you're living with a man who is not your husband. You have told the truth. Now, what was Jesus doing? He was not judging her. He, he, was, he, was, he was bringing an understanding that he knew the condition that she was in. He said, you come and you drink your water from this well time and time after again, and your life has not changed. Sure. You had a husband after the husband after the husband, and another one, and another one, and, you, and you're drinking from the same well. Mm. Now, Jesus comes to the scene because he's in the condition, and he said, now, I want this thing to stop. I'm coming to give you hope. But in order for you to receive this change, you 
everything about you. He knows everything about you. In the Bible says that God knows the heart of man. You can lie to people in your home. You can lie to the man of God. It's okay. But God knows the heart of man. And God will deal with you. She spoke well. She spoke the truth. Because Jesus was coming to the point that said, Listen, you've been drinking water for so long from the smell. And you've just been going on with life the way it is. And you thought all you just needed was another person in your life. Yeah, but, 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 but there was a void in you. There was hurt in this woman. There was a safe place where she hit the pain and the hurt. And all she thought that she needed to do a natural thing mm. to satisfy a spiritual thing. Am I helping somebody? Jesus comes now and he turns the situation. He comes now and he brings redirection to this woman. He comes now and he reconstructs the mind of the Samaritan woman. My prayer is that may God reconstruct our mind. That we build according to the pattern of the kingdom. And not according to man's idea or man's opinion or myself. No, it's about the kingdom. Am I helping somebody? Amen. That's why I said in Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye faster. Seek ye faster. Seek ye faster. Why are you seeking the things that you want? Amen. I want breakthrough. I want this. I want increase. I want this. I want that. I want this. When have you said, God, I want the kingdom? Because you know when you seek the kingdom? In righteousness? He says, all these other things mm. will be added. added to you. Mm. When you do what? Seek his in Oh my Jesus. I love Bible students. And so, Jesus comes now and he reconstructs our mind. He said, I'm going to get to the root of the problem now. Because I found the condition of your life. You see, the Bible says, if you go back into the beginning of the verse, it says it was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria. Mm. Sure. They were journeying somewhere else, but Jesus says it was necessary mm. that he goes through this place to keep this word. Man, mm. Jesus, it was necessary for God to meet you where you were. And we have to meet people where they are. Sometimes it's going to change your agenda, your plans, because it's not about you. The Holy Spirit will lead you somewhere else. Amen. You have to go where the Holy Spirit leads you. And sometimes where He leads you is not going to be in nice places. It's not going to be beautiful places. But it's going to lead you there for a purpose. You are where you are for a purpose. You jumped in that taxi five minutes late for a purpose. For you to speak the gospel to somebody. Yeah. Mm. That's why you always going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And guide you and direct you. Because there's a purpose. Amen. Yeah. I said there's a purpose. And so Jesus comes and he reconstructs this woman's mind. And he finds out the root cause of the problem. And he deals with the issue of trauma. Mm. He says, you answered well. But the person you're with now is not your husband. Mm. He's dealing with trauma. He never let hands, he never rebuke, he never do what all that he needed to do. He, this woman was dealing with trauma and he spoke life because he is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Amen. He is the living water. Amen. Amen. And he was able to do this. Why? It was necessary for him to go this way. Why? Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. Mm. Mm. That's why Jesus was able to be effective in the earth through the help of the Holy Spirit. And you and I can be effective in the earth when we partner with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Sure. We will be 
effective. God wants his church now, the body of Christ, to be effective. Mm. How can you be effective? It's when you do what God has called you to do and not do what man wants you to do and what people want you to do and what your flesh is telling you to do yeah. or what the enemy is telling you to do, the lies. Mm. Echoing lies to you. Sure. Twisting the truth. We have to pray for the strong and deserving of spirit, family. Mm. Because we need to know what is of God and what is not of God in this season. We gotta know what's good and we gotta know what's evil. Am I helping somebody? Amen. Jesus says this is true, verse 18. For you have been married five times and now you're living with a man who is not your husband. You have told the truth. Verse 19. The woman said, You must be a prophet. Verse 20. So I'll tell me this. Why do our fathers worship God here on this nearby mountain? But your people teach. Jerusalem is the place where we must worship, which is right. Jesus responds, verse 21, believe me, dear woman, the time has come when you won't worship the Father on a mountain. Mm. Sure. <laughs> sure. He said, now the time has come. The other Bible says, the time is coming and then it says, now has come. Now is the time. Now is that time. That time has come now. When you will not worship God on neither a mountain. Yeah. Oh. Sure. Are you getting me what I'm saying? But you will be, but your heart will be the altar of worship to the Father. Yeah. Mm. Sure. In spirit and in truth. So God can meet you right where you are. You don't have to go to a mountain for God to meet you. Oh my Jesus. Come on somebody. He will meet you right where you are. And we got to be drawing people to God and his word. We got to meet people where they are. We got to take the time to listen to people. We got to take the time to help them. Pray with them and encourage them. Mm. But there's some people that just don't want to grow up. I just don't want to change and you can't force it. Mm. To each man his own because he's given the power of choice and all. Mm. That's what the word of God says, choose this day whom you shall serve. Yes. He says, I set before you life and death, blessings and curse. But he says, I, I urge you to choose life. Why are you making wrong choices? Why are you making wrong choices? Because some people live in denial. Some people don't know their true identity. They know they don't know their value. They don't know their worth. Mm. And they feel like this is all that what God wants them to know. God has got greater and better in store for you. Amen. Do you know what God has in store for you? He's got so much of benefits in the covenant relationship with him. And you have access to all the benefits. In your covenant relationship with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. That you don't have to beg for it. Mm. Sure. It's yours for free. Mm. You just have to appropriate it rightfully. Appropriate his presence rightfully. He says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all the scripture says, let go of eyes and let his enemies be scattered. When you come to God with the heart of worship, mm. surrendering to him as creator of the heavens and the universe and the earth. He mm. says, mm. all the enemies inside of you, the enemies in where? In? Inside of you. Those things you don't want to deal with your flesh. Sure. That enemy inside of you will be scattered. Anger. Amen. Unforgiveness. That's the enemy. My enemy, my flesh. We focus so much on the devil. The devil is a defeated foe. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? How can you fight a defeated foe? Mm. Praise God. But he says, 
believe me, dear woman, the time has come. The time has come when you won't worship the Father on the mountain, nor in Jerusalem, but in your heart. And the Father is seeking for worshippers, true worshippers, that worship that comes from the heart. That will pursue after God no matter what. That even though you might have made a mistake and you might have fallen, but I'm saying to you today that you have an advocate with the Father, that you can come out from that place where you are. And because why? You have access because of the shed blood of Jesus back to the Father. You can come to God just like David when he sinned. The Bible says he acknowledged that he did wrong. The problem we have today is that people don't want to acknowledge that they are doing wrong. Living wrong. They don't want to take responsibility. Mm. They always want to do the blame game. Family of God, you got to take responsibility for your life. The choices that you make. And the life that you live must be pleasing unto God. That you live a life to do the will of the Father. Nothing else. Have you seen in life when you make choices and decisions without consulting God? Has it ever went right? Mm. When you want things your way and not God's way. Mm. Mm. My Jesus, you got to want things God's way. you got to pray all Force himself. 
He leaves you because he's given you the will and the power of choice. Mm. So, family of God, in closing. Mm. From here on now, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with the right heart. Amen. True worship is not going to be concerned about the right place, mm. but worship that is as the right How can you worship God with unforgiveness? Oh. How can you worship God with hatred? Hmm. You gotta release that to God. Yes. And what then worship God to allow him to heal you. Am I helping you? Amen. Am I helping you? Amen. Am I helping you? Amen. Praise God. So you gotta you gotta allow God to deal with that area, family of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Praise God. And so it's important, family of God, for you and I to desire after the things of God daily. Partner with the Holy Spirit because He creates the hunger and the thirst within us. Only He can satisfy us. Only He is able to fill every void in our life. Family of God, we're all going through some stuff. But I'm saying to you today to set your face as a flint of the Lord. And if you need help, reach out for help. Mm. Reach out for help. Don't die in despair. Don't hold yourself in bondage. Mm. Don't try to do things on your own. But look to God. Look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith, family of God. I'm saying to you today, change your thinking. Stop thinking like the world. Because once you begin to grow in the kingdom principle, amen, you'll pray a life. And your declarations will grow. And you will begin to see the benefits of God in your life. Mm. Family of God, you're going to want truth. You're going to want to be like Him. You're going to have a spiritual hunger and a thirst for righteousness. Family of God. Family, I'm saying to you today. We have been specifically placed in the earth. For an assignment. Family of God, daily I challenge you. To allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you and direct you. And so that you're not led and directed by your emotions and feelings. I challenge you today, beloved of God. By the authority of heaven. That you become more aware of who you are in God. Your identity of who you are in God. Not your title, not your gift. But who you are as a person. And seek the help that you need from whatever trauma you face in life. Mm. Beloved of God, you have been placed in this earth for a purpose. You have been placed in this earth for a purpose. I said you've been placed in this earth for a purpose. You've been placed in this earth for a purpose. You've been placed in this earth for a purpose. Through your pain. Mm. Family of God, I want to say this to you. You have been placed in this earth, specifically placed in this earth by God for a purpose. You are here in the earth to do what? For burden removing, yoke destroying power, just like Jesus. So you are here to do that. Burden removing. That's my assignment. Burden removing. And yokes being destroyed in people's lives. But I can only do that as I walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. And I walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because I'm walking in obedience. Don't go out and say, Jesus gave me authority, but you're walking in disobedience. <laughs> Amen? Go back into your world and effect your territory. Wherever you are today, God has assigned you to where you are today. Know your assignment. Know you for this cause. Know your metron. Know to whom God has assigned to you in your life. You are there to make a difference. Mm. Stop allowing the situation to get the better of you.
explosive of penalty. Now watch this. This is the dunamis power that he has given to us. For what? For miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm. That's what the church needs to see today. As we teach kingdom, preach kingdom, think kingdom, love kingdom, we will see the demonstration of God's power. We will see miracles, signs, and wonders wherever we go. Mm. Amen. Church, are you with Amen. me? Amen. But it's now for the called out ones, the ecclesia. Mm. The called out ones is the ones that God called, not those who call themselves. Mm. Sure. Praise God. Amen. So that's what means, family. You should not be living in fear. Mm. You should not be living in frustration. You should not be a coward. You should be standing with boldness. Yeah. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. And be not ashamed to say, I need help. Mm. I have a problem. I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm going through some stuff. And the Bible says, one who is spiritually mature and strong must reinstate his brother, his fallen brother, back to his position in Christ. Not there to push him down. Not there to weigh him down. Not there to judge him. Mm. But there to help him. Mm. Praise God. Amen. Jesus didn't want to leave this woman at their well. But if you read, continue reading, the Bible says that she left her water pot. Mm. She left her water jar. Mm. She didn't go home. She went into the town and she began to be a witness. She says, come and see a man that told me all about me. She understood, watch this, and I'm really, very, 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 really, really, I was going to release this to someone. She, oh my Jesus, this woman understood that there was someone who took the time to understand and know who she is and where she was and what she was going through and was willing to bring truth to her. You see, family, we are here to bring truth to people. Truth in what we teach, truth in what we encourage, and not lies. And we are also here to be the truth in how we love. Mm. Sure. Because you got a bunch of people that speak truth out of the mouth, but they're not living truth. Mm. Jesus came to bring truth. And he came to reveal truth. Because he is the truth. Amen. So if now us, as his sons, we that receive truth by being taught the kingdom message. We receive truth. Mm. Praise God. And as we meditate on the word of God, I mean, lies and doubt moves out of our mind and heart. As we choose to meditate. And what happens? Truth comes in. What does the word of God say? The word of the Lord, Psalms 190, the word of the Lord is entrance of light into the darkness. Right? So as you, as you learn truth, now you're listening to truth. Kingdom is truth. Not just any message. I said the kingdom message is true. As you as you embrace this truth, it will change your thinking to start thinking kingdom so that you start speaking kingdom and you start living kingdom. Amen. And watch this. You will go out in the truth as the truth. And you will change atmospheres. And you will change people's lives. Mm. Because you're walking as the truth. Amen. In the beginning was the word. Mm. And the word was mm. with God. And the word was God. You will be the only walking Bible that some people are going to read. Mm. Your lifestyle matters. Not your voice. 
I said, your lifestyle, your character is so important. Jesus didn't want to live that woman, leave that woman to lie in that state. But he came to restore her dignity. Amen. Now this woman was not afraid to go into the same town, to knock on the same doors of people who might have rejected her. People who might have spoken bad about her. People who might have forgotten about her. People who might have said whatever they wanted to say. But she received a dunamis power. She received life because Jesus spoke life into her. She received dunamis power. Then she was able to go out bold as a lion. And be a witness. And be an eagle to see to go to those even who hurt her and say, listen, come and see a man mm. that has told me all about my life. I found someone that's concerned about my life. I found someone that's concerned about my condition. Everybody will pass. The priest will pass. The Levite will pass. But there was a good Samaritan who didn't walk past when he saw the person lying on the roadside. He took time to dress his wounds and he took time to pour the oil and he took time to bandage him and he took time to take him into an inn and pay for his bow and said, I'll come back to see that he's well. And whatever, whatever else is due, that he needed from the time I was watching, I will pay it when I come. satisfaction from people. Even though he had to drop the cross in the midst of his pain, 
my Jesus, my Jesus. But he had to pick it up. And even though somebody helped him, but he had to pick it up. But he knew that he had to get to Calvary. I'm saying to you today that you have to get to the place where God wants you to be. No matter what's the cost, you got to look up to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Thomas David says, and look up to the hills, my Jesus. But where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord. I'm not looking to the left. I'm not looking to the right. But I'm looking to God. And I'm going to go through my pain. I'm going to go through my help. And in that pain, the desire and the hunger for spiritual must intensify. I'm telling you, you will see the greatest Spiritual growth, mm. spiritual maturity mm. in your life. Amen. You gotta fall in love with Jesus all over again. Mm. Oh, I'm serving God 20 years. I accepted to the Lord 30 years ago. But you still die. You still dead. You still die. Because you only had a religion with him, but you never had a relationship with him. Mm. Sure. Jesus came to this woman. Mm. He says, You're a Jew. Oxen is Samaritan. You're a man. Oxen a woman. Jesus was not concerned about tradition. Mm. He came and broke the tradition of the day. Are you hearing me? God comes on the scene. He breaks the traditions of the day. Hmm. Family of God, apostolic prophetic people, you are here to break the traditions of the day. Amen. 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 Oh my Jesus. Amen. Sure. Jesus did what? He broke the tradition of the day. He broke the culture. He says, you will not need to go to a mountain and worship, but I'm talking about heart now. Hmm. You will worship God from your heart right where you are. So it's like he said, people, come to church, come to church, come to church. No, tell them, meet God right there where they are. Hmm. You want to meet people where they are. Amen. Right? Because when you go up and sit down and you are led and guided by the Holy Spirit to give you with the one to say and how to do certain things. Hmm. Don't just go out and witness. Hmm. <sighs> In order for you to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you have to be a disciple. Mm, exactly. A disciple is a process. Mm. It's not a one day thing. It's a lifetime journey. Mm. You can't go out, watch this. You can't go out and represent someone you don't look like. Mm. <laughs> and that's what we see today. People are going out representing Jesus, but they don't look like him. Oh, I don't want to hear about church. I don't want to hear about your God. I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear. People don't want church. Hmm. Stop giving people church. Hmm. They need Jesus. Amen. I say they need Jesus. Amen. They need God. They need the Holy Spirit. But family, I'm challenging you. The matter is concerned about your lifestyle, your hmm. character, your conduct of how you dress, how you talk, how you walk. Don't take natural things to satisfy a spiritual hunger mm. and a thirst. Sure. That's what this woman did. But Jesus came. He says, I am come. John 10 verse 10. I am come. That you might have life. And have life in abundance. I believe that. Amen. And he came to give this woman he never just came to give this woman oh like some people today oh I'm, I just can't wait to die because I want to go to heaven sure. let me say this to sure. you heaven is going nowhere mm -hmm. it's heaven is your home yes. it's always there but what have you done while you are alive on the earth matters I 
said to them in Johannesburg, I said, the reward that you're going to receive on the day of judgment, the crown of life, right? The crown of life. But what reward you're going to see? You're only going to receive rewards for the things that God asked you to do. Mm. Sure. So stop doing things that He did not ask you to do. Yeah. Even though it looks like the Jesus thing, and it sounds like the Jesus thing, but you're not graced to do it. Mm. Mm. Sure. In this season, you should not be doing your own things. You should be doing the things of the kingdom of God. You should be about your father's business. Jesus says, I am about my father's business. 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 Nothing else. I am about my father's business. I'm here by the grace of God. I'm here on an assignment. I'm here. Jesus knew it's for this cause. And let me tell you, you're for this cause. Is not your calling and it's not your title. Yes. What is your purpose? Why have you been placed in the life? And I'm not talking about standing behind the pulpit and being a preacher. No. But where has God graced you to be to use you? Mm. Beyond the pulpit and beyond the four corner building. Am I helping somebody? Am I helping somebody? You want to be saved. Pow! And the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Family of God, we have to go to a sick, dying world. But you can't go to a sick, dying world if you're sick and dying. Mm. You bleed and then you're going to go bleed on people. You're a shipwreck and you're going to cause a shipwreck to people's lives. Take time to get your life right with God. Take time to get into God's order. Take time to be healed. Take time to be delivered. You can be saved but not delivered. <laughs> so stop acting all saved, want to be. You need deliverance. We all need deliverance. We all. We all. Because remember I said, when you get saved, your spirit got saved, but not your soul. Mm. And your soul has your emotions, your will, and your mind. That place needs deliverance. And mm. deliverance is only through the word of God. Don't be. How many people have lived like this woman before she comes to Jesus? Just going. Just how many people say, I'm just going with the flow. What's meant to be will be. Mm. Yes. You don't know your God. Remember Jesus says, you don't know this God. Mm. But when you know your God, you will know what he stands for. You will know what his word says. That he says, I shall supply. I shall supply. When you know your God, he says, I shall supply. Mm. Oh my. Yes. Not some. He says, according to his riches and glory, in Christ Jesus. So who are you running after? I challenge you today. Let us run after God. Let us run away from evil and let's run after God. Let's stay with God. Let's stay connected to God. Let's stay focused on God. Let's set our face as a flint of the Lord. So that we hear accurately and we respond correctly in the earth. And we'll not be looking like we are losing control. Like we are a bunch of people going nowhere. Stop being confused. Confusion is not your state of position to be. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lift up your hands, Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. Father, we glorify you. And Father, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. 
We thank you for your mercy, O oh God, because truly we want you. Just begin to open up your mouth and begin to pray. Right now. Just lift your hand and open your mouth. He meets you right where you are. Just take a moment, just take a moment right where you are. God, I want change. Tell him, I want change. I want radical change. Change my heart, oh God. Give me your heart so that I will desire the things after your heart, Lord, and not desire the things of the flesh. You know when you desire more of God and you pursue more of God in His presence, do you know what happens? Your character will change because you are allowing Him to refine you in His presence. The Holy Spirit refines you. Your character will change. And number two, your behavior will change. You are born to be different. You are born to stand out. You are born to be unique. You are born to be set apart. Say, I am unique. Come on, say, I am unique. I am unique. Come on, say, I am unique.
what you want to do. So you can have a Hanukkah.
push your car right where you want. Just drink. Drink from the Holy Spirit. Drink. Drink from the Holy Spirit. Get the Holy Spirit heal you. Get the Holy Spirit help you. Get the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. Let the Holy Spirit destroy you. Oh, 
I cancel every death spirit. I cancel every accident spirit. I decree and I declare that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. I command every attack on your health and your body and your life. Your spiritual life. And in every area of your life, financially as well, I command every attack to stop. And I cancel it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And I decree and I declare and I release God's blessing. God's healing grace upon your life. God's divine protection. I release increased favor. I release promotion. Amen. 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 This is the month of April. This is the month of divine acceleration. Amen. You will excel in the things of God. You will excel in the spirit. You will excel in your prayer life. You will excel in your work with God. You will excel in your understanding. Amen. Amen. No more stagnation. No more limitation. No more lack. Amen. But you will receive power. Amen. That power will accelerate you. Amen. Amen. That you will run. You will run and not throw in. You will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Amen. As you choose to wait on the Lord and wait in God. Amen. Hallelujah. And may the shalom of God rest upon your home, your family. Rest upon you in your work environment, in your schooling environment. I pray the shalom of God. Upon everyone under the sound of my voice. Things that have been troubling you to today. I command that struggle to be broken off you now in Jesus' name. Broken off you now in Jesus' name by the authority of heaven. You have peace. Because the Prince of Peace lives on the inside of you. So I speak rest to you now. Rest to you now. Speak shalom over your marriage, your business. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened to the mysteries of the kingdom. And I pray, and I pray. That you will grow in stamina and vitality to chase after the kingdom. You will pursue the kingdom. Nothing else, nothing else, nothing else but the kingdom. Think kingdom, speak kingdom, be kingdom minded. You are part of a royal family church of the living God. You are part of the royal family. You are royalty. You are royalty. Amen. So walk with your head up held high. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror. You are more than an overcomer. You are who God says you are. Amen. And you can do what God says you can do. Amen. And you can have what God says you can have. And you can go where God says you can go. In Jesus' mighty name, give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, give me a shout of praise.